What's up guys, Will Gibbons here and welcome to the second episode in the three-part How to Render mini-series featuring this cool bent plywood chair. Last episode, I walked you through how we can create this exact chair you see on screen, and if you haven't seen it yet, click the card above to watch that now. This episode will pick up right where we left off, but we're going to bring our chair into an interior space and populate it with other 3D models and get it ready for next episode, which is going to be the lighting episode, where we get into how to make the interior look nice, as well as adding some realistic lighting and bringing the whole scene together. So without further ado, let's dive in. Head on over to willgibbons.com downloads to get your project files so you can follow along with this tutorial. Now let's open Keyshot, and once you've opened your project files, import basic room vignette step file by dragging it into Keyshot's real-time view. Now to take a look at our room here, we've got a bunch of paper thin walls, and this is done intentionally to make our job easier when we get to the lighting aspect. And when we turn one of these off, you can see it's just a basic empty room. Now, I'm actually not gonna need the floor, this red floor, so I'm actually gonna right click and delete that, sorry about that. And then we'll take the entire room, go to position, and snap to ground. So with this room, it's empty, we're gonna focus on importing our files from different locations, also setting up composition, and then basic materials. We're not gonna get into lighting on this one today, that's the next tutorial that will follow but in order to light something, we have to have a good scene to begin with. So first thing I will do is go ahead and hide these other two front walls. I'm gonna do this by Control-Alt-Left-Click, Control-Alt-Left-Click, and leaving this room open is gonna make it easier to set up. Now I want to import our chair that we worked so hard on in the previous tutorial. So next I wanna add my bent plywood chair. If you didn't follow my last tutorial, which went over how to create the bent plywood chair, I strongly recommend you pause this, go watch that so you can create your own chair, which will then be added to this scene. Now I'm just gonna grab my Keyshot BIP file from my desktop and then drag it into the real-time view and let go. And before we accept the import settings, I want to be clear that I want to add this to a new model set, not leave it on default. Go to a new model set and then hit import. So our chair shows up and let's take a quick look at our scene tree here. I want to drag this guy on over, and then these three dots, click and drag to the right, and you'll see that we have model sets. If I double click on the default model set, you see just the room. If I double click on the new model set, you'll see just the chair. So this chair exists in our new model set. Let's go ahead and click on the name and rename it chair, and right click on it to render a new thumbnail. Double click on default, right click, render new thumbnail. So we can have these thumbnails indicate what is in each of these model sets. So we want both of them visible, so let's turn on our chair and let's position this accordingly. So we are going to grab the molded plywood chair from the top level of the scene tree here, go down to position, click on the move tool, and then we can start moving things around just by dragging these planar handles or by using these rotational handles as well. Now, I wanna address a few things. We've got the grainy shadows going on. If that's distracting, go ahead and go into performance mode. That's the button in the upper left-hand corner here. And that'll turn off all the shadows and stuff. Next, I wanna talk about composition. So before I place my chair, I need to have some sort of composition in mind. And I wanna use the corner of this room for my composition. So let's go to our camera tab and we're gonna create a new camera. And once we find the composition we like, we're going to save this camera. Now I wanna set my perspective to be something a little bit higher. I'm gonna go with something like 70 and that flattens out the room a little bit. And then I'm going to also raise my camera higher off the ground. If we go to absolute, you can see how high the camera is off the ground. That's the Y value here. Somebody who's five feet tall, is roughly 1500 uh, millimeters above the ground. So if I was walking in a room, this is how the room would look to me. So if you want it to look like someone standing in the room with a camera, try to throw your Y value somewhere around 1500 or bring it down a little lower if you want it to stage it more like a photo shoot. So I'm gonna just 
some keep somewhere in between 10 and 1400 millimeters probably now the other thing i want to do is this is a square aspect ratio which we used in our last tutorial but this time i want to go for one that's more vertical so i'll go to my image tab down to my resolution or sorry uh, resolution presets and I'm gonna use one called custom, and this is one that I set up previously. I'm gonna click on that, <clears throat> I'll turn off lock resolution, and then I'll resize this to now snap into full screen mode. So this is the resolution I'm gonna work in, or uh, sorry, the aspect ratio. Now that I've got that set up, I wanna position my camera the way I want it, and I'm going to end up with something about like this. Now when we're talking about composition, we can use a tool in Keyshot that uh, turns on a grid and we can turn on thirds and they're really hard to see these gray lines with our gray walls but these lines can help us use uh, the rule of thirds for composition you can try to line up key elements within your rendering with those thirds um, but anyway those are there if you want them so now i'm going to position my chair i will save my camera's position with this floppy disk for now and now if i want to go moving my chair all of a sudden, I'm gonna to have to change my view and stuff. Well, this is annoying. So let's actually keep our camera focus where it's at and open the geometry view. We'll do that with hitting O on the keyboard. And then we're going to drag our project panel to the middle here. And then we're gonna squish this over so we can see both the geometry view on the right and our camera on the left. And this allows us to work in these two different spaces. So on the right, I will right click in the geometry view and say center and fit models. And mine is currently set to wireframe, which you can do, and this allows us to see through the walls of the room. So now I'm gonna go to a bird's eye view and I'll go to my scene tree and I'll find my chair and I'll right, or select it and then I'll right click in the geometry view and say move selection. So here I can move my chair around to get it exactly positioned the way I want it that will look nicest when it's time to render. And I can do so while keeping an eye on what the final image will look like in the left hand side. And I'm not going to spend all the time in the world tweaking this till I'm totally happy with it in this tutorial. The idea is to show you the steps so you can or take this and then continue it and push your own scene further. Now, next, I want to take this piece of artwork on the wall and move that a little bit as well. So I'm changing my camera view in the geometry view. And then in my scene tree, if I look for my room, I've got this thing called artwork. And if I select it, I can right click in the geometry view, move selection, click and drag the arrow. I want this to be a little higher off the ground. That's looking good. Then I want to go and add one more prop just to show you how you can import a file from that you downloaded from the internet, like another model. So we already started by opening our room in Keyshot, then we imported our BIP file, which is a Keyshot file that we already created. But now I wanna show you how to import a prop that you might've downloaded from another website. So I'm gonna browse on my desktop to a file I downloaded from a website called Dimensiva. And it's an FBX file that I'm going to drag into my real-time view. And once again, I wanna make sure this goes into a new model set, not the existing model sets. So click on new model set and hit import. And here we have our cute little puppy toy by Magus or Magus. Anyway, so once again, if we were to look in our model sets, we have this new model set and I can go ahead and call this one puppy. If I wish I could render a new thumbnail and um, it will render just what is inside here. And now I wanna move my puppy, so I'll click on him and in the right, uh, sorry, I wanna go back to my camera view. So go when you toggle the free camera and then go back to camera, it will snap to the previously saved position. Now in the geometry view, we can go ahead and um, we have to select our puppy. Once again, unfortunately, I have to do this in the, in the scene tree. Uh, here it is, and then right click and then move selection here. And then I'm just gonna move him into the corner. So he's hanging out, uh, ready to be pet. <laughs> by whoever's sitting in that chair. I don't want the composition to be too busy, but uh, I'll push them back further to the wall to make them a little smaller. Maybe go a little three quarter view as well, something like that, just by the edge. And at this point, composition is highly uh, personal. It's something where you're gonna want to do a little uh, of your own research on it. I don't love where these three walls are converging and this chair as well. So I might go out of my way to try to fix that really quickly. So maybe I find my chair 
and uh, grab that and then move it uh, maybe further back away just so those aren't all those things aren't lining up in the exact same spot in the image. And then also if this chair is my focal point for the most part, I might want to move my camera down just a bit further so we don't have quite so much empty space above the chair. So this is feeling a little bit more comfortable. I think the dog does seem maybe a, a little out of place. He's a little bit large in the frame. Um, maybe I can do something about that. We'll see. Okay, so let's set up some basic materials. I'm going to, now that my composition is set up, I'm going to use the real-time view again. And I want to go ahead and turn off performance mode. The first thing we're going to do is take care of the floor. I'm going to right click on it and unlink it because right now it's linked to the walls. So I'll hit unlink. And now all the walls should be linked together. I'm going to search for a material called uh, diffuse and I'll use this interior diffuse white which is just like a basic white wall material we can start with. It doesn't have any textures or anything, it's just pretty bare. So use this as a starting point um, and you can add some various textures to it. Uh, for the little dog down here, I'll go ahead and double click on him. I'm gonna make him uh, plastic for now. Just choose a, a bright color, uh, that'll do. And then I'll go ahead and add some roughness, 0.2. <clears throat> and then maybe I care I can get in here with a little texture right click on the bump go down to textures use a noise texture maybe bring this down to uh, two millimeters and bump height to maybe 0.5 or something now for our wall art I'm going to use a textured white plastic and drag that onto the wall frame and then for the yellow piece of this artwork I'm going to do something kind of different I'm gonna go and grab an image I got online. So if I toggle back here, I can show you where I got this. Um, I went to Unsplash, which has a bunch of photos you can use in any way you see fit, which is great. And I'm just gonna drag it and place it onto there and choose color. And I will set my mapping to be planar. Say center on part. Um, you know what, model is just fine. That worked just fine. And then what I wanna do is go ahead and double click on it, go to the material graph, and I will add a color adjust between the image and the diffuse. And then I wanna take the contrast down a little bit, lighten this thing up a bit, just so it's not so distracting uh, with these white walls around it. And that's good enough for me for now. What else? We have the floor that we're gonna talk about. So with the floor, I'm actually going to use a material I got from Polygon. So let's again, hop back online. And I wanna show you places that I get some of my, my downloads. So first of all, the 3D models, uh, Dementiva is a good website. There's a bunch of modern looking stuff in here that are free. And then I also just got the um, concrete texture from polygon.com. And if you want more resources, head on over to willgibbons.com slash learn. And this is where I've got tons of links to a bunch of free stuff you can use in your 3D renders and other good learning resources. So I'm gonna grab my polished concrete for, that I created from Polygon and just drag it onto the floor here. So I'll grab my polished concrete material that I got from polygon.com. And I'll go into the material graph to show you really quickly. Um, it is a material that I had to build in the material graph, but I'm just using this mapping 2D node and a couple of these concrete textures I got from Polygon, a couple of color to numbers to adjust the values of these maps, and just on a basic plastic uh, material there. Assuming you followed along with the last tutorial, which is the bent plywood chair, um, all this should be familiar to you here. If you don't have or uh, the funds to go to a website like Polygon and pay for some textures. You can also go into Keyshot's texture library and search for concrete. And they have a few concretes in there that you can use. And then you can use those as a base a starting point to build your own concrete material or whatever else you wish on the floor. They even have some uh, wood floor and, and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so this is the main function of this tutorial. The idea is that I wanted to talk to you about the different ways you can get 3D data in a key shot. You can start by importing a model. 
you could import a model that was downloaded from somewhere online. And then also some tricks as far as what materials to use where. I strongly suggest just starting with a basic diffuse material on the walls here. It's going to make your final rendering a lot less noisy usually and, and less prone to fireflies if you avoid specular materials on the walls. And then for this little piece of artwork here, again, I have the trick where basically just got an image online and you can see it's actually mapped not quite perfectly here. So if I go back into my material graph, I think I need to scale it up just a little bit. There we go. And then also I wanted to share with you when building out an interior scene where you're gonna have a bunch of props and items, it can take a long time to do the whole thing from scratch. So I recommend you lean on some outside resources. And this is why I have a huge collection of items on my website that um, gives you ideas of where to go to get more things you can use to enhance your rendering. And this is everything from, you know, uh, 3D models to images to uh, whatever. And, and I also use Pinterest, that's another thing. Um, I use Pinterest to save images so I can understand what looks good. And then I can say, well, what's in each of these images that makes it good? And when we get into lighting, this is gonna be critical is having good references. So, and there you guys have it. I hope this tutorial gave you enough guidance and inspiration so you can really take your scene and run with it. I'm not entirely convinced that I'm done with mine. I'll probably add some more props and maybe even play with the materials a bit before next week's video, which is all about lighting, the fun part. So make sure you tune in for that. And if you're fairly new here, I highly recommend you check out my playlist called If You're New Here, Start Here. It's a collection of the best and most helpful videos that I have on my channel for anyone who's fairly new to Keyshot or rendering in general. Anyways, guys, until next time, happy rendering.